We've done a lot of pine understory burning through the years in uh, a number of different places, uh, federal, state, private lands, and uh, I wanted to string together some video clips from, uh, from some of these burns in the past and uh, let you look at um, some fire in some different sites and different fuel conditions. Uh, and uh, it's not going to be a, an in-depth look, it's just uh, some clips put together. The first clip that you'll see was uh, a May burn. Um, and you'll notice the, uh, the greenness in some of the understory vegetation. Uh, you'll also notice that uh, there's a fairly heavy fuel load on the ground. Um, both in terms of um, needles and duff and some uh, some small diameter dead and down. This was an early fire entry into this particular unit and that is kind of reflected in, in the site conditions and fuel conditions. The next burn you'll see is uh, taken at uh, a site that had burn, been burned one year prior, so it had been burned the previous year, and that greatly reduced the fuel loading in it. And you'll see in the fire behavior uh, that there's not a lot of fire activity going on, uh, mostly because of that, uh, that prior burn. Um, so be second consecutive fire entry into this unit burned last year um, I think and uh, just trying to get caught up on some of the hardwood control and, and fuel reduction in here um, after no fire for um, probably at least three or four years so it's a on and off wet site there's some wet areas in here um, so we'll We'll see how well the fire actually does in here this year. You know, these nice big wide open stands like we were burning last week, you know, those burn quite well because, you know, it's way open underneath it and lots of air movement. This site was uh, <clears throat> formerly industrial pine, um, privately owned, and it was donated to the Fish and Wildlife Service probably 40 years ago now. And upon that, um, any forestry activities ceased for a very long time out here. 
and uh, these stands um, didn't grow much because they were um, so tightly compacted in here. We did a first thinning in here in this stand probably eight or ten years ago and uh, we burned it several times but have uh, have not done any more uh, thinning activities in here and it, it could really stand a second thinning at this at this point but uh, we've, trees have added a lot of height um, still haven't added a lot of girth to it. Yeah. One of the other video sequences that you'll see is from a, a site that we've, we've burned um, multiple times over the years. It's, uh, it's more of a sandy site. It's up on a, an old sand ridge and uh, there's a more of an oak component underneath um, the pine. So you'll see that difference in the fuel conditions, the fuel type um, underneath it. And uh, you'll see some different different kind of fire behavior in there. It was more of a more of a dormant season burn, so you not see um, much green vegetation mixed in. Uh, this was an earlier uh, burn earlier in the spring. We're putting in the initial black here on this uh, burn unit on DCR Natural Heritage property, uh, coming up out of a, a bit of a drainage up on the more of a sand ridge. couple of the other videos, uh, one was a fairly early uh, fire entry into a, a state forest unit and you'll see um, a huge contrast in a lot of these sites where uh, they were, were unthinned, we were putting fire into them uh, with little to no effect uh, and then what um, accelerated the uh, the treatments of the stands was a thinning.
finishing up a burn on Big Wood State Forest. Just closing in the, the road edge of this. And there's enough heat in the interior to pull it right off the road with or without the wind. So uh, been a good burn so far. The last video sequence you'll see is from a site that uh, we've been burning regularly for probably 15 or 18 years anyway. Multiple fire entries into it. Um, you'll notice the site's pretty much wide open, um, very much tall overstory, uh, no midstory or very little. And uh, uh, the bulk of the fuels are on the ground. Uh, this is a very sandy site. Um, well drained um, with a live fuel component um, and you'll see um, how quickly fire behavior uh, can change in that site from uh, from one moment to the next with just a, a, a subtle uh, change in wind direction or wind velocity and this is why uh, you can't let your guard down on on any of these burns. You have to stay vigilant. You have to uh, pay attention to conditions and be willing and able to uh, to adapt as necessary. So just watch for spots. And as long as it's doing this, you know, we're in pretty good shape, but yeah. if it stands up again, that's when it might be a problem. Yeah. I feel like the flame over there hit some water or some moisture. Yeah, the wet one to prep Mm-hmm. Yeah. does that that's what will throw a spot out Hey, Adam, Tim. Go ahead. It's got active again up here where Darren is, so you might want to bump up this way. Got you. Come back. How's it going? Walking back and forth. That's the nature of the business. <laughs>